Show a little bit of love and kindness Never go around with hatred's blindness Take a little time to reach for joy and wear a happy face Oh, sing a little bit when the days are dreary Give a little help to a friend that's weary That's the way to make the world a happy place That's the way to make the world a happy place Welcome to this special episode of The Help Podcast where we're going to help you learn how to serve Stay tuned Welcome to this special edition of the Help Podcast, where, we're, as you can see, we are not in the studio. We're on site out in nature today because we have some special guests with us. We have the Highlander Singing Men uh, from Howells Anderson College, and uh, thankful for their service to the Lord. They have actually come out uh, to do some work and physical labor uh, along with the singing that they're doing. And uh, so we figured we'd take the time out here uh, to talk with them a little bit about what it means to serve, as in the Bible College and, and going out and about and traveling and helping churches uh, and as they serve the Lord in that capacity. So I want them to start off with a brief word of testimony. And uh, what we'll do is we will uh, start off with Joel and then we'll go on down the line. Uh, you guys want to share just a brief word of testimony. Um, I grew up in a Christian home my whole life. And uh, when I was young, um, I was about five years old. And I went to my mom and I asked her, I said, Mom, what does it mean to be saved? And she took me up to her room. And in her room, she led me through the plan of salvation. And uh, I, I believe I accepted Christ that day, but I wasn't really sure. So I struggled for the next roughly about about seven years of my life of whether or not I was truly saved. And so I struggled a lot with it. And then I remember one day it was at a youth rally and the preacher said, I'm so glad that anytime ever, anyone ever mentions um, salvation that I can look at them and say that to me, I'm saved. And it, for some reason that really struck me. I'd heard it before, it wasn't the first time, but that, that night it really struck me. And I, um, I said, <laughs> it was three hours away from my home and I prayed, I was like, God, just help me get home and I'll talk to my dad. Bad idea, but that's all right. Um, Lord gave me safety and got home and I talked to my dad and at my couch that night I, I accepted Christ as my Savior. My name is Skyler Albrecht. I also grew up in a Christian home and uh, I remember hearing about the gospel at a very young age and uh, I remember wondering knowing for sure if I was going to go to heaven someday and so I went over to my mom and dad's uh, bedroom and asked them about it you know like hey am I gonna uh, you know how do I get to heaven and so they went through the plan of salvation with me and uh, to be honest though, I really don't remember that experience or really what happened. And so uh, a few years later, I mean, I was just doubting my salvation, knowing not for sure whether I was going to heaven. And so I uh, went to my parents' bedroom again and was like, you know, hey, I'm having a little bit of, of trouble here with my salvation. And so uh, they went through it and uh, I got the reassurance of my salvation. Uh, but even then, I just have trouble remembering. Uh, and that was just a few years later. So. I still had trouble remembering and still had all these doubts going on in my mind uh, about my salvation and just knowing for sure if I was going to go to heaven. And so, uh, you know, I couldn't grow in Christ like I needed to just because I didn't have that settled down. And it wasn't until uh, the youth conference of 2014, July 17th, where I got it all settled. And uh, I finally decided I was just going to get it settled once and for all. Uh, and so I went down to the altar and John Barnes led me through the plan of salvation. He's actually uh, Joel's older brother. Uh, and so he went through the plan of salvation uh, with me and he showed me a verse in the Bible that I'd never been shown before uh, in John chapter 10 uh, talking about how those of us that have accepted Christ uh, you know God Jesus has us in his hands and no man can pluck us out and then not only that but that the Father's hand is also holding us as well and there's no way we can ever lose our salvation and I'd never been shown that before and that just gave me such peace and such assurance knowing for sure uh, that I was going to go to heaven and he told me uh, to do something that I'll forever be grateful to him for. He told me go home and uh, get a Bible and write down everything you can remember about tonight, you know, where well, exactly what time it was, you know, even what you're wearing, who you're with, uh, write down everything you can possibly remember and so that's what I did. I went home and uh, wrote down everything I could remember. He said anytime you doubt, go back to that and read through it and uh, it'll just, it'll help you a lot and it, that's exactly what I did and uh, I've never doubted since. And, I'm, I'm just glad that now I can I can grow in Christ because I have that settled. Uh, my name is Wesley Vestal and I grew up in Oregon City, Oregon. And uh, I basically went to church from the very early hours of my life. My mom tells me that I was at church when I was 17 hours old. And obviously I don't remember that. But uh, I don't know. I didn't have any crazy conversion from sin or anything. But I just remember growing up 
in a good Baptist church, Bible-believing church, and but from an early age, I just assumed that going to heaven was something that I earned, and I assumed that because I was a good kid, because I brought my Bible to church, because I was uh, fairly obedient most of the time, that maybe I could be good enough to go to heaven, but I remember I was a five-year-old boy and I was in Sunday school, and I can't remember the teacher's name, but he mentioned something about how salvation is not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And from that point, I mean, I was, I was thinking about that all the time. You know, it's not about the good things that I've done, but it's about the one good thing that Jesus did. And then maybe probably a week later, uh, my dad talked to me in his bedroom, and he, he explained to me how, you know, I was a sinner, and I needed a Savior, and, and I needed to accept Jesus in my heart to take me to heaven. And right, right then and there, I bowed and accepted Jesus uh, as my Savior to take me to heaven. It was the greatest day of my life. Um, haven't, I haven't doubted it too much since. I know there's uh, some, some people will say like uh, that they got reassurance many different times and that's, that's great, but you know, I really believe that I got saved at that point. So. My name is Troy Cowling. I'm from Mesa, Arizona. I grew up in a pastor's home and uh, heard the gospel from ever since I can remember. And uh, I was told that I had accepted Christ when I was five years old, uh, very similar to some of these men, but I uh, never could recall it myself. So I battled it for many years and just um, almost embarrassed to go forward when all your friends think that you're saved and uh, just battling that. Uh, but when I was 10 years old, July 27, 2010, working in a neighbor's yard and uh, just thinking about the rapture, there were some clouds in the sky and just thinking, what if Jesus came back now? And it, it scared me. I went inside, talked to my mom in the living room right there, and uh, she led me through the plan of salvation and accepted Christ and got us settled that day. And I would just challenge any of you that if you're battling it and you're not for sure, get that settled today and uh, don't wait any longer on that. Uh, one thing that's uh, reoccurring of what you guys have said is just kind of the struggle. Uh, and why do you think it is that, that we struggle as uh, believers that when we get saved, we understand that we're saved by God's grace, but at the same time we have those battles where am I saved, am I not saved? Why do you think maybe personally that uh, that was a battle uh, even to begin with? I think for me, something I really struggled with was not really remembering it and not remembering the time that I knelt down and accepting Christ as my Savior. And I think that was something that personally I struggled with was remembering it. And um, it's just, I don't know, I think just some, there's something special about looking back at a time and place and having that memory of just saying, Jesus, I want to accept you as my Savior. But Now, uh, do you feel that sometimes young people, and I notice this, and I think as workers uh, and servers of the Lord that you have to have that discernment of, when a young person is ready to receive Christ or if they want to uh, receive the ideal of salvation. Uh, there is a great difference, I believe, between salvation and the ideal of salvation. Uh, as kids see their friends get baptized, they want to get baptized, they want to do whatever their friends are doing, or maybe they know it's right. Like some of you gentlemen said, you were raised in Christian homes, you were raised in a pastor home, you know what it means, you know you need to be saved, uh, but maybe prior to your realization of the, the knowledge of that you are a sinner, why you need to be saved. Um, but what do you, kind of advice do you give to some people that are dealing with the same thing? I know uh, um, that, uh, Trey, you encourage people, hey, if you're, if you're tra tra uh, struggling with that, uh, to, to seek somebody out. But what's some advice do you tell some, some young person or even an adult uh, that is not 100% sure if they're saved? What, what advice would you give to them? I think uh, working with young people, if they can't admit that they've done anything wrong, I think that's a, a big one. That uh, Obviously, they need to realize that they have a need for salvation and uh, just working through junior churches. And with adults, I think it's just not being ashamed. And um, I think that's the big, that was the biggest battle for me, is just uh, going up in, in front of people again and saying, you know, I wasn't for sure that first time, and uh, now I'm getting it settled. It can uh, be a little nerve-wracking, but uh, once it's all done, they're as happy for you as you are. You know, and uh, I think we just, uh, something the devil uses as a roadblock. Uh, I came real quick. I, I've heard a message one time about uh, getting reassurance and what, what the pastor said was uh, he was quoting a Bible verse I can't remember the actual text but it says he had forgot he had forgotten that he was purged from his old sin and I really believe people can be saved and forget about it uh, you think about you know we're saved we, we become God's child but then if we get far away from God and sin takes over in our life and and we we stray so far away that maybe we can we can forget that like the Bible says there so uh, that's that's one thing that can hinder you uh, maybe from getting close to God or not, not believing that you're saved.
oftentimes scripture uses the picture of uh, us as, as the bride and, and marriage and things of that nature. Uh, as soon as you were saying that, it, all, it brought my mind to the thought of, of that a married couple who've been married for so long, but we forget why we married them, why we stood before God and made a vow and saying, I love you, I pledge my life to you, I pledge my heart to you. And 20, 30 years down the road, we tend to treat each other less than what we did on day one when we got married. And so that's a val valid point to say that, you know, hey, uh, we get so far away from serving the Lord or we get so far away from why we got saved or what God saved us from. Uh, I think that is such a danger in Christianity today is, is I think that's why people don't serve as much as they used to because they forgot why they got saved. They forgot why they started serving to begin with. Uh, maybe they got hurt in something, uh, which is which is valid. People get hurt all the time in church work because you're working with people, right? Uh, but, you know, it, you keep doing it because of the very reason. that I didn't get saved because my mom wanted me to or my dad wanted me to or my church wanted me to, though they did. Uh, I got saved because I was lost and I needed a savior and I needed help and I needed, I needed uh, eternity in heaven, not eternity in hell. Um, so, but you guys uh, travel around uh, and then you guys are, are regional, correct? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, and uh, what region would you say that you guys travel around in? Uh, Midwest. Midwestern area, some mid-Atlantic, and then because we're doing more camps, we're going as down south as Arkansas. So it's just, for at least this year, it's less regional, but it still is a region. Uh, and so you guys are going to Howells Anderson, and so tell me a little bit about uh, individually, and we can start with uh, Trey uh, this time, but uh, uh, what is it that brought you to Howells Anderson College as opposed to me? And I'm a, I'm a Crown grad. I certainly have nothing against Howells Anderson. I love Brother Wilkerson and all the work he's doing there, uh, and uh, just see what you guys are doing for the Lord. Uh, but what has it brought you there? Because uh, I, know, I know our pastor down in Tennessee told us all the time that Crown College isn't for everybody. It's who God wants here, and that's who we want here. And so what would you say as, I guess, a lack of better words, a plug for Howells Anderson, uh, what the Lord, why the Lord brought you to there and kind of how has it helped shape you into the servant that you are today? Uh, two things that really stand out to me. Uh, the first one is just the ministry opportunities. And I know a lot of the colleges have these same things, but just being able to uh, serve on a bus route, work in a junior church, you know, ride the night bus, things like that, and just have the opportunity to preach and to work with kids and adults. and. Uh, that was one of the biggest things. Another one is just the staff are involved and in, even uh, in your lives and in your ministries and always open for counseling and just whatever you need. They're very real and uh, it just stood out to me even when I was there for college days and even while I've been there these first three years. Just something that's uh, really stood out and uh, kept me there. So, so actually two, th two reasons that I chose Hiles Anderson College, uh, just like Trey, but first of all, uh, I saw the product of Hiles Anderson College and I wanted to be that. I just remember growing up in a church and having missions conferences with people, graduates from Howells Anderson College, having uh, pastors come through when they were graduates, and, and just from an early age, I wanted to go there because I saw the people that were there. I saw that they were into evangelizing the world, and that was the first thing that really uh, drew me to Howells Anderson College. The second thing is the experience that you would gain at Howells Anderson College, and I know other Bible colleges, you do get experience. But I do believe you get the most experience at Howells Anderson College just because of the extensive work that you put in on the weekends. I know we leave Saturday morning, get back Saturday night, leave early Sunday morning, get back like 11, 12 Sunday night. And all of that is jam-packed with ministry opportunities, with uh, listening to messages, with helping on the bus routes. And to me, I wanted, if there was one thing that was lacking, I would want it to be maybe be just a little bit less education and more experience going into ministry. So in essence, it's all about serving the Lord and, and where God is directing you guys to and taking you to. And uh, obviously, different. we have a couple of pastoral majors, uh, a media major, and a youth major. And uh, I just need to see how God directs, leads, and guides uh, you guys to where you're at. Uh, obviously, you guys are all young guys. And uh, you know I'm thankful that you surrender that call now in your life as opposed to when you're older. Uh, have children and things like that later in life uh, that you're utilizing the time that you have for God in this moment. With traveling around uh, America, I've noticed that uh, in many different traveling groups you guys have different opportunities to do things. It's not just about singing. Uh, obviously earlier we are playing some catch in the front yard, uh, but you guys have had some unique opportunities to serve and do different things. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I know today you're going to be doing some work here uh, for us. And so what are some, some unique opportunities you guys have had uh, while being on the road and, 
and maybe if you guys can collaboratively uh, figure out maybe what's one of them been the most unique situations you've ever been. I know I told shared this story with you guys that uh, I remember New Testament church pioneers uh, back in the early 2000s dug a um, outhouse for a church in 2000. I think that blows my mind that we still have outhouses uh, in this in this day and age. But uh, so, what are some unique opportunities that God has given to you, or maybe even some uh, unique as in strange? things you've had the opportunity to do? Uh, back in May we had a really unique opportunity to be able to go on the live broadcast for 90.5 The Key and that is the radio station for the First Baptist Church of Hammond and it was really awesome we were able to go on there give a short testimony of, of the ministry opportunities that we've had at Hiles Anderson College. Uh, we sang a couple songs and we were just able to talk with Pastor Wilkerson and that was a really unique experience for me because I'd never done anything like that before. For me personally, I think one of the greatest parts about tour um, is getting to meet so many pastors. And I feel like that's not an opportunity a lot of people get to have. And you know, this is my second year on tour. And you know, by the time I'm done with tour, I'll probably have met close to about 100 different pastors. And it's fantastic because I get to learn something from each pastor. And you know, as we go to each church, it's just awesome getting to sit down, talk with the pastor, and just to pick his brain, find some, you know, some wisdom that he has, and every pastor has something new that you can learn from them. And I think that's something awesome we get to learn from tour. So one of the things as a traveling group that you do often, obviously, is you travel. And uh, so in that uh, confined space, you have, a, you have a nice van that you use, uh, but in that travel time, uh, what are some things you do maybe to kind of pass the time by, or, or do you guys bounce things off each other while you're driving uh, just to help each other as you serve the Lord together? Um, many times in the van, or I guess every day, we always have a devotion together. I think that really helps uh, connect us and by our leader brother John always uh, heads that up for us but always share a blessing, share what we learned, even read a passage together. Uh, but on the less um, spiritual side just uh, always joking around with each other and uh, just uh, saying jokes and laughing with each other and having a good time and I think it's really uh, brought us together as a group. Who's, who's the one that gets made fun of the most? Let's be honest. Probably Joel. Joel. Probably yeah. Joel. Joel. <laughs> That's right. Uh, one thing to, to keep having fun on tour is you have to have a good attitude and that's basically with anything in life. Uh, you can be complaining about how long drive is, you can be complaining about the last church you were at, where you stayed and all that, but when you decide that you, you're going to have a good attitude, you're going to have fun, that changes everything. Um, I just, I know even growing up that's something I struggled with a little bit, but, but since going on tour, just learning to have a good attitude has really changed everything, it's made it a lot of fun. Uh, you have to learn that uh, you can uh, be on the receiving end of some jokes and still laugh at yourself. So that's that's another thing. But. Sleep. <laughs> Lots of sleep. Lots of sleep. Now I noticed when you said that, complaining about the church you just left, you pointed at me. What I don't I don't get what that means. I mean, it's a, it's I pointed in that now? direction. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I see. I see how it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Hopefully the church is not. Um. So what are some things that you've learned on how to be a servant during these experiences? I mean, I know obviously, uh, you know, some of you haven't been just your first year traveling, and uh, but uh, obviously you said that you've been traveling for uh, two years, Joel. Uh, but so what are some things that you have learned about service uh, for the Lord? And I mean, uh, one thing that we were talking about last night with uh, you guys was that um, the mentality of men, men and women coming into the service for the Lord is it can be a mentality of we're looking for a paycheck, we're looking for a title, we're looking for a benefit package. Uh, because our benefit package, our worth is found in the Lord. Um, you know, recently I had the opportunity to counsel somebody that was struggling with what they were doing. And um, we have to bring them to the place to find out that when your circumstances change, uh, when your job changes, when your marital status changes, whatever the case may be in the sense of, of losing your loved one uh, to death, uh, it doesn't change your worth because your worth is found in Christ. And um, so we serve the Lord because we love the Lord and because what he's done for us. And so uh, what are some things you've learned uh, through this time about serving the Lord? I think something for me, just something I've learned about serving the Lord, is jump right in. And um, you know, every church, we, every church we go to, we try to offer a help in some way to the pastor. And honestly, just when you get into the work of the Lord and you're doing the work, it's 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 the most satisfying thing I can think of, really. Just you know, serving the Lord, you'll never, you'll never be caught serving the Lord in sadness. You know, the Lord always gives you joy for serving Him, and it's just 
honestly, just you know, serving him is um, just jump right in. It's, it's going to be so much better than if you just slowly kind of like, oh, I don't really, I don't want to do this work. I don't want to do this work. I want to do just this. And you, you'll never feel fulfilled. Just, just jump right in. Do everything you can. And that's something I just, I think I've learned from being on tours. Just jump right in. Uh, one other thing I've learned is never, never be too big for a small job. I mean, you can go to a church. I, I know Skyler, he was out there mowing the lawn about an hour or so before uh, the pastor got up to preach. And uh, we were all helping together at different churches. So just, uh, just remember that you're all working for the Lord. And it's not really about the job you're doing, but it's about serving God. Um, I think just try, try anything they give you and you never know what you're going to enjoy and sometimes you're just afraid to fail in whatever situation they put you in, whether that's around a junior church or uh, do something that you've never done, you know, lay a floor, whatever it is, and uh, just uh, jumping right in and just um, seeing what you enjoy and just giving your best and I think the Lord will bless it. Um, I think uh, this whole experience um, has taught me a little bit to be a little bit more flexible. Uh, just because you know you never know what what's going to be next or anything, and uh, you know brother John may say, hey, come sing for this random person you've never met in your life, and you're like, all right, let's do it. And uh, so it's been a lot of, of fun, you know, just learning to be flexible. And that's what it's about, though, as as far as you know, we're here serving the Lord, we're uh, serving people, and so you got to learn to to be flexible. So that's one of the things that has uh, that I've learned just al already off the bat. There is a scripture verse that says, "Be not weary." And well doing uh, you know by the end of the summer you will be having traveled to how, how many churches would you say you're gonna be traveling to by the end of the summer I think about 45 50 so, so 45 or 50 churches um, the drive is gonna uh, seem weary uh, some of the labor is gonna seem weary uh, so what's some advice you give to people that are laboring I mean uh, as a pastor I see it and I, I'm sure you guys will see it in your life coming up but you're gonna find people that serve the Lord for 20, 30 years, and something that you're gonna to have to ask the Lord now to help you with is how do I help them keep on keeping on because, and not to become weary in well-doing. Uh, and you're gonna, I think the Lord's gonna help you this summer with that in the traveling to be able to help them with that advice. But what kind of advice uh, can you give now, especially, I guess, Joel, since you've already done a year of traveling, uh, you know it is like already beyond the road and, and that type of thing. Um, but what's some advice maybe you give people that are serving the Lord on not giving up kind of use a silly illustration but you can't drive a truck unless there's gas in it and that's the exact same way in the christian life you'll you'll feel burnt out if you don't have the power of god and you know adam actually just preached about this last night and you know that power of god nothing can substitute it how you know how how would we get up there in front of people and sing to people and you know us be empty of the holy spirit you know that's we're, we're not going to be able to bless them if we had nothing to bless them with and so, you know, to not be, you know, quote unquote, burnt out and to not feel like you want to give up, just be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, keep your walk with God, pray, read your Bible. And once you do those basic things, you're going to find that it's a whole lot easier and, you know, it's going to be a whole lot easier to minister to people. And, you know, you're not going to feel wearied and well-doing because you're still in touch with God. So, uh, I think, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I, I think, I mean, two things. One, what Joel said as far as keeping your walk with God. And then a verse comes to mind uh, in Proverbs, uh, a just man falleth seven times and yet riseth up again. Mm -hmm. And I found so many times, you know, even when it's tough and you know, you just gotta get back up and you just don't quit. And the Lord's gonna help you through it. And if you have that relationship with him, you know, he's gonna help you uh, get through whatever trial or struggle you're, get, you're, you're trying, you're going through at the time. And just not to quit, not to give up. Uh, that would be one of my, Things that I've learned anyway. I think just kind of what Skyler said is just decide not to quit and even Daniel just purposing in his heart and uh, just decides you know this is where God wants you to be and this is what I'm gonna do and uh, if you're always looking for an out the devil's gonna constantly give you one and uh, if you just uh, but just decide what you're doing is right and, uh, you're gonna stick to it and then another thing is just enjoy it and whatever if you enjoy it then you're gonna stay longer and just uh, enjoy working with people and you know, whatever the opportunity is that the Lord gives you and uh, you'll be there well. There's a song out there that's uh, called Excuses. How many of you guys know this song? Yeah, it says excuses, excuses. The devil, he'll provide them if the church will stay away. And it's the same for the service. And that, that's a really good point that if we are looking for a reason to quit, we're going to find it. So you guys are working and serving the Lord hard uh, everywhere you go. At least that's how it should be, amen. Uh, but what do you guys do to, to keep things relaxed, keep them fun, 
uh, again, I guess kind of going off of that be not weary and well doing, uh, what do you guys do to try to have fun? And obviously you guys are all different personalities, uh, different things that you guys enjoy to do. But what are some things uh, that you do uh, to try to keep things relaxed, you know, uh, playing catch, things like that, throwing balls in the lake, whatever? Um, yeah, I would say, you know, just getting outside, throwing a football around, just something fun we do just to pass a little bit of time in between breaks. But um, honestly, I know we already said it, but, you know, just having fun, making jokes, and sometimes at the expense of others. But honestly, it's it's all in good fun. We know that, and, and we just, uh, I don't know, it's just kind of have try, try to be relaxed. And, you know, it's just have fun, and that's that's what the work of the Lord is. And just, it is fun, so. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite memories was we were playing catch uh, right at what was that Lake, Lake St. Clair. Okay, I had just bought this football. It was a total of four dollars and eighteen cents <laughs> plus tax at Walmart, so it wasn't that big of an investment. Uh, but we were playing catch, and I somehow knew I'm like someone's gonna throw the ball right into the lake there. And sure enough, uh, we go over there and take a picture, and then the ball comes sailing out of the air, thrown from Brother John. And Joel does absolutely nothing to try to get it, and it bounces into the lake. And we waved goodbye to the football, and Brother John bought a new one, so that, that was a, a good memory there. And so I enjoy being with the guys. Uh, you know, I enjoy the long trips we have. I enjoy getting to meet new pastors, getting to see different ministries, meeting new people. So it's not—I couldn't say like you know the one specific instance where uh, I'm really looking forward to a to tour. Um, I don't know, maybe the camps though. That's I've really, right. yeah. I, I remember growing up, I love going to the camps um, just because it separates you from you know everything going on in the world and you really can take that time to focus on God. And so I'm excited for us as a group because we get to go to the camps now and we get to you know help with that. We get to help other teenagers with that, uh, that experience. And so I think I'm really, I'm excited for that especially too. Well, that's all the time we have for this podcast. We're glad you decided to join us. I hope it helped you learn how to serve. And the most important thing I want you to catch from the whole entire thing is the heart of service. It's not about the job. It's not about the place. It's about who we're serving, why we're doing it. And I hope that it's been a great help to you to serve the Lord. Look forward to seeing you back here again on the Help Podcast. I was, uh, I mean, I grew up at First Baptist. And so Hiles Anderson, um, I mean, it was always there. And it was kind of just, <laughs> I can't do this. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm Everyone around me is like, I'm like, keep it in, Skyler. It's not happening. I'm sorry. For more information about First Baptist Church and Hiles Anderson College, you can visit our website at hilesanderson.edu.com. Thank you for watching the Help Podcast. We hope it was an encouragement to you. If you have any questions, you can contact us at 419 668 four six two nine. You can visit our website at norwalkbc.com or you can contact us via email at info at norwalkbc.com or you can feel free to write us a letter and send it to 2084 U.S. Highway 20 West, Norwalk, Ohio 44857. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please join us again next Saturday for another episode of The Help Podcast.